My name's Jed, this is my wife Kelly, we're from Asheville, North Carolina. It is a 2009 Toyota Tundra regular cab short bed. We were looking for a short wheelbase, land cruiser sized vehicle to do the fiberglass box situation on. Looked at several vehicles and realized that the act of cutting a, a, an SUV in half was a little bit more than we were, we were prepared to do and uh, just sort of happened on the idea of this uh, regular cab truck that pretty much had the things that we wanted in a compact short size. Um, I started in mid-2018. Um, it took about a year and a half to complete. And you know, these kind of things are never really complete. I mean, there's always, <laughs> there's always something. But the, the main build was, was uh, a little over a year to a year and a half. I would say the solar system is really something that I wouldn't want to do without. Um, it's just so nice to not have to worry about charging, plugging up, and all that. That it just sort of takes care of itself for stuff like lighting and, and keeping the you know keeping the fridge going and all that. I think the the pass through going between the cab of the truck and the back, um, just having that open sort of van like situation where where you can crawl through and where the dog can go back and forth while you're driving. Uh, that's something that uh, not that many people are doing it and was really cautioned not to do it and I think now that we that we made it happen it really it really came out well. Something I couldn't live without is the refrigerator. The bed, the sink, the refrigerator, the luxuries. <laughs> so when we completed the truck right before COVID, we had a whole trip to Baja planned out and we're two weeks from leaving when they closed the border. So we really want to we really want to make that happen. It almost drives like a car. I mean, it, it really it really drives for a, a lifted vehicle and a vehicle with, you know, a, a fairly heavy camper setup on the back. It's smooth compared to, you know, coming from an E350 van on the same size tires and everything. I mean, it's night and day. I mean, it truly drives like a car. So I guess the first thing is uh, the seats were, I recovered the seats with, uh, you know, leather, you know, not like almost leather with leather trim, like actual leather from the cow. You know, we've got our, our nav system here, you know, upgraded radio. Uh, the good thing about these Toyotas is that the, uh, the, the switch panels, they've, they've got all these built-in gaps for switches, so you can put all of your switching of, you know, exterior lights, all that, you know, you can work it in with the plastic situation in the truck without having to have S-pods and, and switch banks that are, that are external. So we've got our, our, our trusty spare tire, it hangs off the back in a way that, uh, that it's, it's locked. Lug nuts are facing in, so somebody can't steal it. Also got our uh, water or fuel um, jerry can storage. We got two of those back here so I can hold 10 gallons of liquid. Um, we, we own both water cans and gas cans. Typically, typically we go one in one, but depending on what kind of trip we're taking, um, whether having more fuel or having more water is sort of the priority. We have a Propex furnace that you know provides our heat, so we got the exhaust and the air intake for that. We've got uh, our 20 pound bottle of propane, which runs the furnace, the water heater, tankless water heater, shower, um, and then our fuel and water inlets and some tool storage. I'm a contractor by trade, so uh, construction of bigger stuff than this. Uh, not so much design, but um, sort of trying to think it through and think, you know, kind of have it the way that I want it, you know? I think the two main things that, that we've struggled with the most is the door going in and out. I wish I had adapted a factory made door rather than making my own. It's not as smooth as, as I'd like it to be and it doesn't have an integrated screen like a lot of these hampers and stuff have. The other thing is the rear suspension we're still kind of working on on lower shock mounts and just trying to get our, our up travel right. So this is the ARB awning. It, it has walls that you can actually close this off like a tent, which is nice if you want some privacy or uh, you know, if the weather gets <laughs> inclement. You know, the uh, Camp Chef table is nice because it puts, puts, your, puts your workstation up you know, at bar height rather than having to lean over like a folding table that's more at seating, seating height. Well, we've got a nice high ceiling height so you can feel free to move around. Um, the bed is above us. Um, it folds down, putting the sleeping quarters up high where you can see out really well if, if you want to, or it can all be closed off for privacy and light and all that. So here's the bed, so we just disconnect these two things. Down comes the ladder, down comes the bed, and your true queen size bed. You know, it's just, you know, super simple. 
We originally had traditional drawer boxes and we found that if things kind of got musty in there. The other thing is we do have other vehicles that we want to use our camp cooking stuff, so we switch to the Pelican boxes so that we can just take our cooking gear to where it needs to go and it kind of keeps everything sealed up and fresh. Well, we have a one burner stove and a sink. Um, the majority of the cooking happens outside because we're camping. We like to be outside. This is just for morning tea. So this is a, a fridge-freezer combo. We don't use the, the freezer part, but um, but it's, it's got plenty of space um, for multiple days of food. And again, it runs off the solar, so it just it keeps everything just um, nice and cold. We just got back from a month in Wyoming, and Wyoming was just incredible. I mean, there's just so much so much out there out there to do. Um, South Dakota was really nice. Uh, Custer State Park in South Dakota we, we really like.